But another way of fingerprinting flies led to a very important discovery about the life game. Becoming visible here are patterns that show differences among vital chemicals of life from different individuals in a population of flies. Here, a race track's being made ready for putting those chemicals through their paces. The fluid going into these tanks will simply provide electrical contact to the two ends of the slot that runs down the middle. It's going to hold some jelly. Now the liquid jelly is going in. When it's set and formed, it will provide the lanes down which the chemicals will run a slow race as they are dragged through the jelly by electricity. Each of these little baths will be the last resting place of a single fly. Richard Lewontin of the University of Chicago was one of the discoverers of differences among flies far more extensive than most biologists suspected. Material extracted from each fly has to go to take up its own starting position on the racetrack jelly. The material being tested contains special proteins that do the basic chemical work of keeping a fly alive. They are big molecules made by order of the genes. So any difference in the speed of the molecules through the jelly will imply a genetic difference. The techniques known as electrophoresis, molecules with different compositions that affect their natural electric charge, will travel faster or slower than the rest in the strong electric field. After some hours, the molecules will have made headway down the electric racetrack, and the jelly comes out. Evolution depends on some versions of genes being increasingly favored in successive generations. But many biologists used to think that such choices were available only for a small minority of the genes. To find out where particular molecules from the different flies have arrived in the jelly, there's a special staining technique. To Richard Lewontin and a colleague, Jack Hubby, the emerging patterns in electric racetracks revealed how many alternatives are present among the genes. They're tokens of individuality. Each of these tracks it results from the same kind of molecule taken from a different fruit fly from a natural population. And you can see there's a huge amount of variation between one fly and another. As a matter of fact, if we look at all of the different kinds of molecules that these flies are made up of, we find that about a third of them have this kind of variation. Now, the important part about this, point about this variation is that it is determined by the genes. It's inherited. And that means that there's a huge amount of genetical variation from individual to individual within the population. It's these genetical variations that make evolution possible, because if there are inherited differences between individuals, then changes can occur in time. For a long time, we didn't know how to determine how much genetical variation there was between individuals, even though we could see uh, surface differences between them. But now these new methods of molecular biology, like gel electrophoresis, make it possible to determine gene by gene the differences and similarities between individuals in the same population. And when we apply these methods, we find huge variations from individual to individual, not only in Drosophila, but in man as well. Indeed, Harry Harris in London has shown that individuals in a human population vary in their genes just as much as flies do. In fact, they vary so much that every individual is genetically unique, and uh, we could tell each one from the other by looking at their genes. In this way, uh, molecular biology has solved a long-standing problem of evolution, which is how much genetical variation is there from individual to individual that makes evolution possible.